Anne Jeffries as Marion Kirby, the ghostess with the mostess. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghost as... Topper. Yes, Topper? Oh, uh, I wanted to talk to you, Mr. Scala, but I uh, just wanted to make sure that no one else was around. Well, uh, who else could be around? Well, I, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, uh, you're uh, all trouble, Topper, the little people, the Kirby's, I believe you call them. They're a very nice couple, really, but they have a way of getting me into trouble. That's why I'm not telling them about this. Yeah, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's very sound. Uh, Mr. Scarlett, I've been doing some intensive research on a matter of vital importance to the country, money. Well, glad to hear it, Topper. The vital need of our national economy today is a seven-cent dime. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I beg your pardon. I designed it myself. The answer to inflation. <laughs> uh, this is your own idea, Tampa? Ah, uh, yes, of course. Why? Oh, nothing, nothing. I just thought perhaps it might have come from your little friends. But I told you, uh, I don't want them to know about this. Besides, is that a normal size? Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. There's a hole in it? That fits vending machines. Now you take the nickel candy bar. The price of sugar goes up. The maker, because he has to sell through machines, raises the price to a dime. Inflation. Now, with my new coin, he only raises the price to seven cents. No inflation. Well, that sounds uh, fairly reasonable, yeah. Our whole coinage system is totally out of date. Now, if I could get my new coin to the right people in Washington, I... What, uh, what's the matter, Topper? I think they just came in. They did? Well, thank you, Mr. Schuyler, for giving me your time. We'll take it up later, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> take what up, Topper? We must have lunch together, Topper. What, Topper? Never mind. Well, anything you say, Topper. Take what up, Topper? You have to tell us. I refuse to tell you anything. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, he put something in his pocket, Marion. Thank you. Don't you dare. Stop that. Nothing there. I must apologize, Mr. Skyler. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you need a rest, Topper. We better frisk Skyler, Marion. Pat him down, George. I was just looking for a match. Uh, you need a rest, Topper. Why not, uh, why not take this idea of yours to Washington? Uh, in person, that is. Oh, really? Uh, can the bank spare me? Well, we'll muddle through. <laughs> You'll come back a new man. Oh, what was he talking about, Topper? Yeah, what is this thing you're taking to Washington? <coughs> Numismatics. Numismatics? What's that? Well, you've, you've heard of atomic energy. Yeah. Well, this is numismatics. <laughs> the whole thing is just so exciting, Cosmo. Washington receptions, cocktail parties, affairs of state. Well, I'm afraid there isn't going to be much of that, dear. Oh, you're just being modest, Cosmo. When they find out how brilliant your plan is. What is it again, dear? A new coin. Halfway between a nickel and a dime. Oh, yes. That's very clever of you, Cosmo. Thank you, dear. Cosmo, you're not keeping anything from me. Keeping anything? I mean, have you told me the real reason we're going to Washington? Well, I've just told you. Of course you have. Something about a coin. Well, what else could it be? Men don't go all the way to Washington about diamonds, Cosmo. Now, do they? Henrietta, 
I suppose that at least once in the life of every man there comes an idea that to the rest of the world seems trivial, unworkable, even at times a little ridiculous. Some people dream of rocket travel to the moon. I should like to see my country coin a seven cent dime. Of course, dear. And whatever it really is, Cosmo, you know how I am about secrets. Don't tell me. <laughs> Think of old Topper stumbling onto something like that. Now, don't go off the deep end, George. Deep end? He was only in Skylar's office two minutes, and when we came in, Skylar was as white as a sheet. Top was not a scientist. Take it straight to Washington, he said. Straight to Washington. What is it? In spite of the awful knowledge remained locked in the brain of Cosmo Topper. Numismatics. Look at this. Imagine, a wire for hotel reservations. A wire to Congressman Sudbury from this district asking for an appointment. Oh, me, the scientific mind just doesn't know how to get things done. It's a good thing I've taken over already. You wrote those? To all wire services. Mystery scientist Cosmo Topper arriving Washington for talks with Pentagon and White House. To the FBI, request for 24-hour protection. To Joint Chiefs of Staff, key cabinet members, and Commander-in-Chief, demand for immediate audience, top secret urgency priority. Topper in the White House. The first line of our defense is a scientific brain. Uh, Washington. I want to see a senator, Cosmo. Can't you tell them about those little string ties? Yes, of course, dear. Just be careful, Topper. Remember, we're here to protect you. Yes. Don't talk to strangers and don't go out by yourself. Small chance. What, Cosmo? Um, uh, Paul Schmantz, an old classmate of mine. The name just occurred to me. Why? Did he live in Washington? No, but he was a capital fellow. <laughs> <laughs> There he is. Come on, Pete. Uh, Cosmo Topper, uh, when are you seeing the president, Dr. Topper? Any comment on that? Uh, we'll get one with Mrs. Topper here now, will you, Pete? They all seem to know you, Cosmo. Seems by suspicious. I don't know. There. A foreign agent if I ever saw one. Oh, he's trying to be Topper. Within security, Dr. Topper, could you give us an idea of what you've developed? Why, yes, I, I'd be glad to. Sorry, Dr. Topper, no statements to the press. You'll come this way. It's a trap, Topper. Don't go with him. That's ridiculous. It may be ridiculous, but I have my orders. My car's over here. We'll save you, Topper. <coughs> <coughs> didn't even touch him with it. Well, that's the way. Must be an invisible force ray. I heard you. Secret Service assigned to guard you. Such an exciting city, Cosmo. I had no idea a seven cent dime would get this reception. I'll get it, dear. Dr. Topper, I presume. Charles Sudbury, member of Congress from your district. A real pleasure, Dr. Topper, a real pleasure. Uh, would you come in, sir? Oh, my dear, this is Congressman Sudbury. Uh, how do you do, uh, Mrs. Topper? Do sit down, Congressman. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I just thought I'd drop over and see if there was anything I could do for you and the doctor. Uh, lunch, perhaps. Doctor, is somebody sick? It's just Mr. Topper, sir. Really? Well, the more remarkable. You must be very proud of your husband, Mrs. Topper. Oh, Cosmo is bound to stumble on something sooner or later. He's always thinking, you know. Uh, I'll go put on my hat and do sit down, Congressman. <laughs> Thank you. Does he look like a congressman to you, George? An interloper. Definitely the criminal type. 
Perhaps you'd like to see Congress in session sometime. Don't trust him, Topper. He's a spy. Don't be absurd, George. Uh, the name is Charles. <laughs> it was only a suggestion, of course, Dr. Topper. Anything you say. Oh, that's very kind of you. <clears throat> Naturally, I'd like to discuss my ideas with you at the first opportunity. With me? Don't do it, Topper. Uh, well, now, my theory is that, uh, please, Dr. Topper, I have nowhere near the, the security clearance to discuss such information. But why should it have to have clearance? Oh, Dr. Topper, really, he was a scientist. George, he's stealing the thing. Never. Well, of course, uh, if there's anything else I can do, don't hesitate to call upon me. <laughs> Dr. Topper, believe me, I, I didn't take it intentionally. I, I didn't even know I had it. <laughs> Dr. Topper, it, it's all a mistake, please. I, I, I'll go right to the Pentagon, uh, arrange an appointment. <laughs> Pentagon. Trip him, Neil. <laughs> I'd better make it the White House. Well, but, Mr. Sudbury, Mr. Sudbury, I, I... No. I thought he was taking it to lunch. Well, he, uh, he had to uh, vote on emergency issue. But why was he hobbling? Hobbling? I expect it was a lame duck congress. <laughs> with him? The box? Yes. That box is worth millions to us, Fenster. Billions. Uh, pardon me, but aren't you Cosmo Topper? Why, yes. Emil Barco, sir. You've heard of the Barco Foundation for Scientific Research? My associate, Dr. Fenster. Pleasure to meet you, Dr. Topper. How do you do? Uh, perhaps you could join us for a moment. Well, my wife is meeting me here. Good, then we can chat until she comes. <laughs> Sit down, Topper. These are big men. And honest. You can tell by the earlobe. We'll join you. Uh, how did you, uh, how did you do that? Uh, Italian restaurant. The chairs are Roman. <laughs> Dr. Topper, are you fully aware that there are governments willing to pay a king's ransom for your discoveries? A king's ransom, sir. Really? Well, actually, I'm interested only in our own currency system, Mr. Barco. Now, don't get us wrong, sir. Pray, don't get us wrong. We are patriots, sir. Absolutely. Your discoveries shall, of course, go only to the United States. Besides, who can pay more money? That sounds reasonable, Topper. But I tend to give it away. Give, give it away? Oh, here you are, Cosmo. Uh, yes, dear. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for your interest in my plan. box has given me the creeps. No. All men have their weaknesses, Fenster. Topper's weakness isn't money. It could be women. Get in touch with Marlena. Dr. Topper? You are alone? I, uh, I, I suppose one might say I'm alone. Then I am not intruding. No, indeed. <laughs> I... I hope you do not think me bold. I wish an interview for my college paper. <laughs> well, that's very flattering, I'm sure. Go on in. <laughs> the liberty of ordering. Of course. What's an interview without champagne? <laughs> Won't the dean of women object? 
using your hands. Uh, I promised my wife I'd never touch it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's floating. It's, it's very light champagne. <laughs> Tom, Tom, you shouldn't let Neil get loaded like that. He looks perfectly sober to me. Who looks sober? Oh, uh, uh, General Grant. A statue right over there. What did she say? Barco. <laughs> she was working for Barco. They're trying to get the box. Why? Anyway, I still have it. I should have realized. He's the type that would stop at nothing. Well, what can he do? The girls. They're gone. He's holding Henrietta and Marion. Preposterous. Is it? he say he'd pay a king's ransom for your discovery? Well, yes. Why, of course. It's their only logical move, the fiends. You really think that... They'll be getting in touch with us soon, Topper. When they ask for the secret, what will you tell them? Well, what can I tell them? Only that I have a plan for a seven-cent dime? In your position. I'd only hope I'd be strong enough to do the same. Whatever the personal cost, your country comes first. You're a raving idiot. Perhaps, but I salute you. Hey, wait a minute. They've got Marion, too. How come you're so noble with my wife? Ah, Dr. Topper. May we come in? Come in, yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Do I understand that you're ready to discuss terms? Go ahead, Topper. Sound them on. Uh, have you got her? Her? He means Marlena, boss. Oh, yes, yes, we have her. Are you interested? Well, naturally. <laughs> you see, Fenster, a chink in the shining armor. <laughs> Ask him about Marion, Topper. Uh, have you got uh, another one? Another one? <laughs> yes, yes. Let's not shilly-shally. Uh, what is it you want from me, Barco? It's very easy. The plans. The box with the new energy, and we hand her over. Don't you understand, you idiots? Ever since I came to Washington, I've been trying to get someone to listen to me. All I want is for the government to coin a seven-cent dime. Topper, really? Of course, you idiot. You're a bold man, Topper. I regret the steps we shall have to take. Fenster. A seven-cent dime? What a joke! Why, what's wrong with it? What's wrong? Well, it's it. Never mind. Get on with it. Yeah, sure. Watch out for that box. Uh, 
Let's get him, Neil. Stick him, Neil. Now, Topper, shall we have the secret? Or... Go get him, Neil. Stick him. George, you killed him. You forget, Topper. We're on the ground floor. Dr. Topper, are you all right? We were listening outside the door. What? You're under arrest. Attempted espionage. And kidnapping. Kidnapping who? My wife. Where is she? Did you call me, Cosmo? Hi, Henrietta. Oh, I've had the most wonderful afternoon shopping. Will you help me with these here? Oh, how do you do? You don't mind if I go? What about my wife? And did you call me, George? What's that? <laughs> Why, that's just uh, the box. Oh, oh, really, gentlemen, look. My seven cent dime. That, that's all? Then I bid you good day, gentlemen. We'll sing them. <laughs> Amazing. He's one of the great scientific minds of all time. Produced by John W. Lufton. A John W. Lufton, Bernard L. Schubert production. Starring Ann Jeffries, Robert Sterling, and Leo G. Carroll. as Marion Kirby, the ghostess with the mostess. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghost as... Topper. sure that no one else was around. Well, uh, who else could be around? Well, I, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, uh, you're uh, all trouble, Topper. The little people, the Kirby's, I believe you call them. They're a very nice couple, really. But they have a way of getting me into trouble. That's why I'm not telling them about this. Yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> very sound. Uh, Mr. Skyler, I've been doing some intensive research on a matter of vital importance to the country, money. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Topper. The vital need of our national economy today is a seven-cent dime. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I beg your pardon. Uh... Designed it myself. The answer to inflation. <laughs> uh, this is your own idea, Topper? Ah, yes, of course. Why? Oh, nothing, nothing. I just thought perhaps it might have come from your little friends. But I told you, I, I don't want them to know about this. Besides, they're a normal size. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. There's a hole in it? Uh, it's vending machines. Now you take the nickel candy bar. The price of sugar goes up. The maker, because he has to sell through machines, raises the price to a dime. Inflation. Now, with my new coin, he only raises the price to seven cents. No inflation. <laughs>